Hello there. Hi, my name is Nikki Williams and I'm the Programme Director for Respiratory and Sleep Physiology at Swansea University. Um, we're housed in the College of Human and Health Sciences, uh, which is a lovely department where there are lots of different um, healthcare science uh, programmes on offer. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, me, first of all. I'm a, refer a respiratory physiologist. Um, I trained in the Royal Brompton Hospital in London, uh, worked there for a number of years and then decided I would come along to, um, to, to the university uh, and um, I've been here ever since. Um, so a little bit about um, the course itself. It's a three-year full-time programme and um, it's aimed at people who want to train to become respiratory and sleep physiologists in the, usually in the NHS um, in, in the UK. Now, many people won't know what a respiratory and sleep physiologist is um, and so I thought I'd explain a little bit about what the role involves before, uh, before going on to the course itself. So um, a respiratory and sleep physiologist works generally in the NHS in a clinical department and they're involved in assessing the way in which people's lungs work. So they may perform lung function tests and a lung function test will, is a relatively simple test uh, where a patient would do some breathing manoeuvres on some specialist equipment and that would tell us about the size of their lungs and um, how effective the lungs were, so whether they were taking oxygen in at the, uh, the correct sort of um, concentrations and getting rid of the waste gas carbon dioxide, so a little reminder of your biology lessons there. So um, that a simple test then first of all called a lung function test. But um, we get involved in lots of other um, assessments of breathing in different uh, situations. So the lung function test is looking at breathing at rest, but we're also interested in what happens to people's breathing during exercise or stress. So um, some of the time we put patients uh, to walk on a treadmill or they sit on um, a, an exercise bike. And while they're exercising, we measure various aspects of their lung function again. So that might involve them blowing into tubes or it might involve breathing with a mask on so that we can measure how fast they're breathing, how deeply they're breathing, and how much oxygen they're, um, they're taking in and um, how effectively they're supplying the body with what it needs to exercise. And so um, obviously that's uh, quite difficult for some uh, people to do, especially if they've got um, medical problems. And so part of the role um, of the respiratory physiologist is to, um, to help patients to manage some of these quite difficult tests that, um, that they may be asked to do. So we've talked about doing a lung function test uh, and then talked about doing a form of exercise test. The other thing that we get involved in is looking at breathing during sleep, which is where the name respiratory and sleep physiologist comes from. So um, some people have normal breathing throughout the day, but when they go to sleep, then they have abnormal breathing patterns, which can lead to them feeling very sleepy when they wake up in the morning and various um, uh, difficulties during the day. And so one of the ways that we can assess their breathing during sleep is by um, attaching various sensors um, to their body, maybe um, a sensor um, just under the, the nose to measure their breathing pattern, and then some sensors to measure the oxygen levels in their blood. That's usually a very simple um, tool that just is like a, a, a peg that sits on their finger. And then a little box to measure their snoring and that sort of thing. So it's very, very simple. The patient will come into the hospital, we'll set them up, they'll go home to sleep. And then when they come back the next morning, we'll have lots of data that we can analyze to find out whether there was a problem with their breathing overnight. So um, those are a few of the things that we do. Um, there are lots of other tests that we get involved in um, and depending on where you work, the, the sort of larger the hospital, um, then obviously um, the more uh, complex investigations um, a respiratory and sleep physiologist might get involved in. But it's, um, it's a really exciting job and um, unlike some areas of um, science, uh, you actually uh, are with patients all the time. So although you're using technology, and um, computers are a very big part of the job, then you're always facing um, a patient, a human being as well. And so 
One of the key things um, for a respiratory uh, and sleep physiologist uh, is to be an excellent communicator. And I hope I'm communicating well with you at the moment. Um, we need to put people at ease. We need to explain exactly what we need them to do when they're doing these um, rather complex investigations. And we need to be there to be able to be, um, support the patient and to put them at ease. So I've given you a little flavour of the, the sorts of things that respiratory and sleep physiologists get involved in, um, in the NHS in, in the UK. Um, there are other jobs that um, anybody graduating from this course could do. They could work with um, companies that produce the equipment that we use to um, assess lung function as a, um, a, a sales representative or a clinical advisor. They could work in the armed forces um, and um, a few of my graduates graduates have um, got very interesting jobs. One of them is working in Qatar. Um, she's actually set up a, a lab to measure paediatric uh, children's lung function over there. Um, and so this degree has set her up to, um, to travel the world as well. So it's, um, it's got lots of opportunities. Um, uh, and um, there are uh, lots of other things that you could do with it as well. So um, moving on to the course then. The course that uh, we offer here at Swansea is accredited through the National School for Healthcare Sciences, which is a body that was set up a few years ago to oversee all of the um, professions allied to medicine that offer diagnostic and therapeutic um, services in the NHS. So our course has been accredited, so we know we're offering a very good high quality um, provision here at Swansea. And so it's a three year full time degree and it's quite a demanding program because unlike some of the other programs that you might do where you get um, three months off at, Christ uh, at um, over the summer, for instance, in the program that we offer, you're in university for 42 weeks out of the year and um, you spend some of that time in university learning about the science and the technology that underpins a lot of these investigations that I've told you about, alongside some of um, the other important um, knowledge and skills that you need to develop to be a good respiratory and sleep physiologist. And also, you um, uh, go out on clinical placements into the NHS in Wales. So um, it's a full-on course. There's lots, um, lots to do, and it's certainly not an easy ride, but it's uh, very enjoyable. This is feedback I've had from um, former students. Uh, it's an enjoyable course, and although it's demanding, you're learning skills that you know you can put into um, good use at the end of the programme uh, to work as a respiratory and sleep physiologist. And so... Um, on the, the programme then, you will share some of the, of the teaching with all of the other healthcare science um, students that we have in the college. So um, you may be in a lecture with people doing audiology, you may be in a lecture with people doing cardiac physiology, neurophysiology and medical technology. And so these um, generic shared modules will be things like maths and physics, um, anatomy and physiology and uh, pathophysiology. And then you'll do some modules that are purely respiratory and sleep physiology. And as the course proceeds, you will do fewer of these shared modules and more respiratory and sleep physiology. So you get to specialise in that, um, that area uh, uh, more as the course goes on. In fact, in the third year, there's just one shared module with the other students and the rest of it, you spend all your time studying the more complex as aspects of um, respiratory and sleep physiology. Okay, so um, a little bit more about the way that the course is, um, is structured then. So um, when you're in the um, university block, then you uh, have lectures on most days of the week, usually, and some days that will be lectures all day long. Uh, not just lectures, some of the... Um, the sessions that you'll do will be very practical in nature. In the college, we're extremely lucky that we've got very, very good um, clinical facilities. So um, in the um, um, 
building that I work in, we've got a fully functioning lung function lab, which would be exactly as you'd see in any of the hospitals around the UK. So um, what this means is that our students get to use the equipment, become familiar with uh, the way that the equipment works, understand the, the principles behind it so that if something goes wrong with it, they, they know, they can pick up the signs and they can um, learn what to do to um, improve the way that the equipment is working and you spend quite a bit of your time finding out about your own lungs because um, in these practical sessions we ask students to test each other and to um, find out um, you know how, how their lungs are working which is always good to know. So the university blocks then are, are, um, are quite busy, but then for roughly 50% um, of the time that you're in, in the university, you will be on clinical placements. And um, Wales isn't a very big country, but we've got um, hospitals in North Wales uh, and in all areas um, through South Wales. And so, for instance, in the first year, you would um, spend 10 weeks um, of the year on clinical clinical placement and that would involve you going um, at first uh, you'd go just on a short placement to see what gets uh, done in, in a respiratory and sleep department and you'd um, get involved with the patients, go and have a look around the other departments in the hospital so that you familiarise yourself with what it is to be working in the NHS and then following uh, subsequent placements you'll actually get involved in testing patients and um, measuring their lung function. That um, sounds scary, possibly, but remember we've got these fantastic facilities in the, um, the college, so you'll have had a good deal of experience in, in using the equipment before you go out on placement. Um, and then in the second year, uh, you spend 21 of the weeks on, um, on clinical placement, and so you're going to get much more um, in-depth experience and um, what, what you'll do while you're on placement is you'll compile a portfolio which will demonstrate that you're developing your um, ability to um, use the equipment, to, to deal with patients and to um, perform the investigations that need to be uh, performed. And so by the time you're in year three, then 25 of those 42 weeks are spent out on placement. So what you can um, see from that is by the time you finish this course, you'll have got a lot of placement hours under your belt. You'll be competent at doing the job and so you'll walk out of here straight into a job in the NHS. And I can say that because 100% um, of the students that study our programme and um, uh, get their degree walk into a, a, a very good job in the NHS in Wales or um, in England and as I've already mentioned some of them further afield. Um, and so it's uh, you know, an excellent um, programme in that respect. Um, you might want to know how much you would be likely to earn. Well, uh, uh, um, as in lots of the healthcare professions, once you graduate from this programme, you would enter the NHS um, as a practitioner, and so you can expect a starting salary of around about £21,000-£22,000 a year, uh, depending on where you're working. If it's in London, it's going to be slightly higher than that. But if you really um, enjoy the job, get lots of experience and continue to study, um, which uh, will um, improve your um, uh, performance in the job, the sky's your limit really. Um, the scale goes up to around about £100,000 for a consultant clinical scientist. So um, there's plenty of opportunity for career progression. So... Um, um, Charlie's asked a question here. Sorry to stop in the middle there. I'd just like to answer Charlie's question. Thanks very much, Charlie. Um, you're asking, when you're on placement, do you just observe or do you get to test patients? Well, certainly in the first year, um, the initial placement will be more um, uh, observing what's going on but yes you do get your hands on um, the equipment and you're testing patients under the supervision of um, a qualified mentor so you'd never be um, you know in a situation where you didn't know what you were doing but um, what you'll find is as you go through the program you'll get more and more confident and then you will be performing these tests because indeed by the end we want you to be competent at doing these things so we'd expect you to be um, 
you know involved in running a clinic by 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 the end of the uh, the program. So thank you for that, Charlie. Um, the one thing about the programme, I've mentioned that um, there's 42 weeks in the academic year, so um, it doesn't take a, an expert mathematician to work out that you don't get that many holidays, but you do get two weeks off at Christmas, one week at Easter, and then seven weeks in, um, in the summer. And so it's, um, you, you've still got plenty of time to, uh, to go travelling or do whatever you want to do. Um, what else do I want to tell you then? Um, Commonly, we, we were asked um, about things like the entry requirements to the programme. So um, our entry requirements are three Bs at A level, and we like um, uh, applicants to have at least one science A level, or we will accept maths. Um, and the reason that we ask for that is because um, we know that there is quite a lot of science within the programme and unless you've got um, a reasonable um, knowledge coming in, it, you're going to find it um, you know, quite uh, difficult to, to get on possibly. So um, we, we do interview everybody that, uh, um, that meets our requirements because it's not just about being academic, it's about um, your ability to communicate, your um, uh, compassion. We're very um, uh, keen that people treat the patients that they come into contact with compassionately and with empathy. And so we want to see um, our, our uh, potential students before we, um, we offer the place. Um, as well as um, the academic requirements for the course, as with all of um, our healthcare uh, programmes, because you're, um, you're going to be working with potentially vulnerable um, people, then you would be required to have um, a DBS check, which is just to check your, um, that you don't have um, any um, criminal record. And uh, because of the nature of the work, you'd have to have an occupational health check that just made sure you were fit to do the job. Um, okay, uh, I'm not sure what the time is, I'm coming to the end now, so um, if you've got any questions then um, please contact um, by email study at swansea.ac.uk and um, you know, if you want to send us any comments we'll get back to you, but thank you very much um, for, uh, for listening and bye bye.